Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from bitamount.com, bitamountlive.com, and B.L. Combs Asia. And, and today is uh, Friday, February, 20, uh, February 18th, 2022, and this is our weekly video. A look back and uh, see what's been going on with the uh, global member pages over on the Bitamount site, all the auctions that are linked there, uh, what's happening at some of the bigger auction houses, uh, uh, at Sotheby's and Christie's and things. we got a a few things I want to go over about a sale that's happening at Sotheby's you might find interesting, and uh, uh, what's happened over at eBay and upcoming lots for the for the uh, uh, weekly newsletter page, which we do uh, every week. We update a page on the Bitamount site so people can uh, things that we find that are listed on eBay that we think are are okay. We check them over and make sure they're not going to disappoint somebody uh, and. Uh, all of that so you know, there's a lot going on one of the things I wanted to mention before I get into the video is um, I will be out of touch for a good part of next week um, I'm going to be going in to uh, have some uh, surgery and things and um, uh, I'm going to be basically out of touch from uh, probably uh, Sunday until the following Monday uh, which is in February, just just so you all know. And the uh, Identification Assistance Service, we're going to have to uh, unplug it for that week. So if you if you can, hold off on sending anything new until I get back. And I'll put a notice on the page that everything's back to normal, hopefully within a few days of uh, uh, what's going on and everything, everything goes well. We're hopeful. Okay, now uh, what what else is happening? Um, a, a couple of things I wanted to mention was one over uh, some things over on the global member pages. Uh, there was a, there was a pretty good sale that took place up at Arnold's in uh, Ontario over the weekend, and uh, they had pretty good prices. A uh, nice pair of Chinese export reticulated plates here, these under trays, but very finely decorated, uh, nicely done front and back, and uh, ended up selling for uh, four hundred thirty three dollars, which I think is a a, a pretty good buy. Uh, they seem to be in very nice condition. Little under, just a hair under eight inches in diameter. Very attractive though. And uh, one of the things I think was a relative bargain was that if you've been following, if you missed the Doyle sale in New York City that took place uh, a couple of days ago, uh, two days ago it finished, uh, there was this, this uh, 13 and three quarter inch, basically a 14 inch uh, Kangxi Amari charger. Uh, really nicely done, uh, 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 you know, looked to be in very, very good condition all the way around, front and back, and uh, ended up selling for just $300 uh, for a charger, uh, which is a pretty good price. If this was an 8-inch dish that brought 300 I wouldn't have been surprised. But for a charger to bring that, I think that was a, an absolutely, you know, great buy. You can, you can buy at Doyle's. A lot of people don't go to the big the bigger auction houses in the cities because they think you can't get a, a get get a good purchase. I'm gonna there's some lots here that are gonna show how how you can. Okay, this was one of them, and uh, then there was this this really nice about a 17 inch tall uh, Japanese Amari jar, beautifully decorated and in very good condition. Uh, if I looked over this before the sale. It was made around 1900, late Meiji period. But uh, the enamels and everything were in, in very, very good shape. The gilding on the Phoenix looked very complete. And it's framed by this very uh, elegant uh, royal blue uh, upper section with gilt and cobalt. Gilt and cobalt are two of the most attractive color combinations you can have. And then with these little lasagnes of uh, enamels in green and red uh, sprinkled in. Just a, a really attractive vase. And uh, somebody picked this up. This is amazing. For just $250. And this was at Doyle's in New York City, all right? Uh, I think that was under the money. I thought the estimate was very reasonable. It was a beautiful uh, piece of porcelain and uh, good age to it, well, uh, unusual design, and uh, for 250 bucks. Imagine what a table lamp that would make. All right, and they also sold this, a set of four Chinese uh, Qing, uh, they call them beauties, but uh, 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 young maidens, um, all framed, matted, and ready to go. All right, and these are nice watercolors. These were done during the 19th century, probably around 1850 to 1880. Uh, very nice detail, elegantly done, in good condition, gilt, gilt framed, no less. They're all, each one of them is about eight or nine inches in height. Um, not professionally framed, obviously, and beautifully done. It's a wonderful set. Somebody picked up the, all four of these for just $350. There were only two bids on this. Uh, well, there was one for 300, three and a quarter, 350, and that was the end of it. All right, that was an amazing buy. 
That was an amazing buy. Each picture, in my opinion, is worth 400. Uh, that this was a very, very good buy, and at Doyle's. So uh, keep it in mind in the future. Uh, you know, I always say leave a bid. Leave, 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 don't be afraid to leave bids at Doyle's. Uh, uh, and I thought their estimate was extremely reasonable, but uh, 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 that's the way they do it. They don't push for big reserves there, so you want to check that out. All right, and coming up uh, at Valenhuis de Jager over in, uh, uh, the, over in uh, Gus in the Netherlands, uh, when's this sale? Uh, it's in 11 days. Is this really attractive pair of lacquer decorated bronze vases? These are lovely. If you're if you're a, a metal collector and you like Japanese work and you like Japanese lacquer, um, th these are very very nice. They have a little bit of discoloration. Something ran down the body here. That will probably you could probably get that cleaned up, but uh, just beautifully done all the way down there about around about eight inches tall. Uh, absolutely great and uh, they have a very reasonable opening estimate of just 180 uh, uh, 80 dollars uh, but they're beautiful they, they should easily bring up up to uh, close to the high estimate I would think 500 euros for the pair these are beautiful and and and, and wonderful pattern all right the other thing that's coming up this is down at uh, uh, gallery Zach they've got one of these very nice Kung Chi period celadon incense burners with uh, underglaze uh, cobalt uh, decoration and some white slip here and here, but very nice. We've seen these before, um, um, and they they t these are these are very very nice. Uh, and uh, it, it's I don't know why when they show comparisons they couldn't find a comparison to this. There are they are out there. I've seen them. At any rate, it should bring uh, uh, two to three thousand uh, dollars anyway. It's it's got an opening bid of seventeen hundred. I think it'll 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 do fine. It'll get it could bring even more. It could even bring thirty five hundred. This is a nice looking piece of porcelain, wonderful color pattern, and uh, a, 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 a very good uh, solid on, beautiful glaze. And then over here to this, this is a sale that's taking place here in the states. It's also on the global member pages. This is Material Culture, and they are in Pennsylvania, and they do they specialize in rugs and textiles. They're very sharp. And they have a sale coming up with a whole bunch of uh, Central Asian and Chinese carpets in them. I think I saved the page. Here it is. All right. Uh, a bunch of very attractive Chinese rugs in here. A whole slew of them uh, from different periods, some from the 1890s, some from the 1930s. You have these red ground, these very colorful things that uh, pe pe people uh, lean towards, if they, especially if they have an Art Deco interior in their house. Here's one with red, with lime green ground. And then you have more traditional ones like this one over here, like the speaking rug and so forth. Uh, but check it out if you're looking for rugs. This is, a, this is an interesting bunch of Chinese rugs. And Chinese rugs are ridiculously under the market. There's also some good Turkoman things in there. And um, uh, so check that out. Keep an eye on that sale. Material culture, it's on the global pages. Um, and then over here to this, this is a, a sale, who's having this? this is uh, Hudson Antiques Gallery in Jersey City, New Jersey has a sale coming up. And one of the things they have is one of these uh, a Judgment of Paris plates, Chinese export plates. And it's interesting because I was shown one of these this week and it was a copy uh, that, that somebody has available. They are starting to make fakes of the, all of these uh, historical uh, export plates that have religious scenes on them, European scenes, or, or mythology, myth, mythological scenes in enamels and in grisaille examples. So be really careful out there. Uh, they are making copies. This one is not a copy, uh, but uh, it's a very, very famous story, very, very famous palette. It's been, this, this scene has been painted by multiple European artists and it was adopted by uh, uh, Chinese porcelain makers on request through special orders from, from Europeans. And uh, this is one of them, four to eight hundred, eight to twelve hundred dollar estimate, four hundred dollar starting bid, very reasonable. Should get up to a thousand dollars to fifteen hundred. All right, and then over to this. This is nifty. If you like Japanese tables, this is a very nice piece of probably uh, Meiji period uh, lacquer work. Is a small table. It's beautifully done. It looks to be in excellent condition all the way around. The top of it is fully carved. You see the top of this thing. This is a wonderful table. Uh, there's the top of it, all decorated, all carved out in black. It's just as elegant as can be. Um, if I bought this table, I'd probably have a piece of glass cut for the top. 
and put it right around, just insert it right there, and then you could it would be a bit more functional. You wouldn't have to worry about things uh, damaging the lacquer, chipping the lacquer, heavy things being put on it. You gotta, you gotta get you, there is glass you can buy now for this. They actually have a variety of what's known as museum glass, and if you can get it thick enough, you put that on there because it doesn't reflect light. It'll look like there's no glass on it. It'll, it'll look transpa completely transparent. It's wonderful stuff. Anyway, it's got a $300 opening bid. It's a wonderful table. It's 28 inches wide, 30 um, uh, or, or 38 inches wide, rather 28 inches high. So it's it's over a foot long. It's uh, over three feet long. It's a pretty good table, pretty good size table. And this is Andrew Jones out in LA is having this. He's had a few sales lately. They're pretty good. This looks like a neat table if you're a Japanese lacquer buyer really think it is look into shipping um, uh, of course because it's furniture and it might be a little expensive to ship but boy what a wonderful piece of furniture and uh, this also I think is at Andrew Jones I'll check it in a second is this very unusual Famille Rose 18th century uh, hot food pot uh, uh, very nicely done most of the hot food pots you see are, are, are later Ching this one appears to be 18th century with this absolutely beautiful uh, overglazed blue enameling. Uh, really unusual, really unusual. Most of the time you see it in underglazed blue. This is all overglazed cobalt and a lot of it. Uh, interestingly, it's same, same hand, original handles. It's missing its lid, but I think the pot itself is absolutely beautiful and, uh, and interesting on top of it. The estimate, I think, is low. Uh, I think it should bring six to eight hundred, but it's a very attractive uh, piece of porcelain, and it, 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 the sale starts in about about ten days. All right, and then moving over here to this, this is a sale, I believe it's in New York, but it's a very nice barrel form with these lug Kangxi period uh, teapot. Uh, and, and what's nice about it, I noticed right away the gilding on the on, on the leaves and the enameling all look to be in good shape. Some of the high points have fritted a little bit, but not bad. And the, and, the, and the scroll finial on the top, the handle is original, a little bit worn, but it's okay. And uh, it's got an uh, estimate of six to $800, which is reasonable. It, uh, this sale's in a month. This is a, a show place, uh, auctions, auctions at show place in New York. And uh, uh, the sale's in 29 days. But if you're a Kang Shi buyer, you wanna sort of bookmark this, I think, if you're, if you're, you know, you're, you're looking for a nice teapot. Uh, uh, we had one of these very similar to it uh, a couple of years ago, uh, almost identical, I think it was. And it seems to me it brought, uh, we sold it, uh, we threw it on eBay at auction. And I think it went for around 1800 to $2,200, somewhere in there. All right, so so I think you could safely ignore the estimate on this, but as a, with all these lots, always get a condition report, condition report, condition report that they will swear to. And then next is this. This is a very interesting uh, Mayping vase, 18th century. Uh, they didn't date it. Who's having this? This is Clars out in Oakland. They didn't bother dating it for some reason. I don't know why. Everybody's afraid to put dates on things. Uh, but this is possibly Kangxi period, absolutely 18th century. Wonderfully done, beautiful form. Here's a picture of the bottom of it, uh, looking about the way it should. A little bit messy and sloppy the way uh, way they often are with these these monochromes, but uh, a very nice uh, piece of porcelain. And I think it's about eight inches, eight inches in height. Uh, estimated at five to seven hundred. It's got a couple of bids already. Ought to bring seven hundred to a thousand. It's a nice looking piece of porcelain, it really is. Beautiful color. I love that color. Uh, and then other things that are happening. This is a sale. There's an online sale. It's uh, up right now. At, at, it's on the global pages. It's, a, it's The sale is on the 22nd of this month. It's at Sotheby's London. And um, they have uh, these beautiful pair of Yongshen period uh, 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 rooster plates. Uh, they look to be in absolutely great condition. Um, I looked at these pretty carefully. And the enameling on them looks excellent. I don't see, even see any fritting on the rims. They look very, very clean, beautifully filled in, um, in pretty much pristine condition, from what I can tell. I, as I say, you know, I always get the condition report. But boy, they look awfully good. And the estimate is reasonable, 1,000 to 1,500 pounds with 1,000. It's got three bids already. And there's no reserve to work through. Uh, it's at 1,000 pounds currently. Ought to bring... Um, upwards of 1500 or more 
But uh, if you've been looking for a pair of these in the Yongchen palette, Yongchen uh, period rather, with the, with this beautiful Famille Rose palette, uh, these are a good choice. Uh, they're, they, they seem to be in great condition. Um, they're very well done, masterfully done, and uh, uh, they really come out at you. The contrasting of the enamels is excellent, which is important. And the other thing I wanted to mention was this. It's sort of, they call it erotic. I don't think this is erotic. It's rather sweet. It's, well, it's, it, 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 I don't like the term. It's romantic. And it's, it's a scene of a young lover coming over the balustrade just to look at his, at his girlfriend, who's, who's somebody that he's fond of, just sleeping quietly on a summer day or a nice, pleasant afternoon. And he's hiding behind his fan a little bit, acting a little shy. And it's just a wonderful scene. She's laying on a beautiful Chinese uh, coverlet, I might add. At any rate, it's a, it's a nice painting. It's a char absolutely charming painting, I think. And uh, it's in the sale. It's got a, a 1,500 to 2,500 pound uh, estimate, which is fine. It's got no bids yet. 1,300 pound opening bid. This is a wonderful painting, though. On glass, reverse painting on glass. 18th century uh, Qinlung period. And it is uh, 9 by 13 inches, the, the glass plate itself. So framed, it's a little bit bigger. But boy, that's a, a beautiful, beautiful Chinese painting. And then over here to this, they have this Kangxi period, uh, uh, a sort of a Bombay-formed teapot with feet. Uh, nicely done all the way around. Good colors, nice condition. 1,000-pound opening bid uh, at, at present. It's already got uh, three bids. Should bring the, again, 1500 or more pounds but nice teapot nice condition and then this i think this is potentially one of the one of the nifty buys of this sale is this beautifully done um in a fairly large carved rock crystal of a Kuan Yin and her acolytes and there it is it's just absolutely wonderfully done uh, standing on a lotus base framed and then, and then over, all the overhead, uh, the fish scale, sort of a fish scale pattern framing or above, and the acolytes to either side. It's nine inches tall, I'm pretty sure. 10 inches tall, it's almost 11 inches tall. 10 and, 10 and 5 eighths inches. This is a big piece of rock crystal. For only, with an estimate of only eight to 1200 pounds, which I don't understand. Uh, I, it's gonna go through that. It's already got interest, it's up to a thousand pounds. It's got six bids so far. Uh, it should bring two to three thousand, but if you like rock crystal and and and, and somebody paired it up with um, uh, I don't know if it's original to the piece or not, but it has this really nifty old velvet and silk uh, case um, with, with with cloth hinges on it, which I think is terrific. That goes with it, but uh, they they they're dating it I think pretty conservatively to 1900. It could have been made. A, a good bit earlier than that by maybe 50 years but uh, regardless it's a beautiful piece of rock crystal and uh, and it's not a crazy price it's 10 inches is, you know you're getting up towards a foot long piece of rock crystal that's a big piece of crystal and the other thing I liked a lot in this was a painting that is 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 dead is, is attributed to Sun Jiao Shu and this is a, a very delicate this is how he painted it certainly looks like the, the work the guy did but very delicately painted, absolutely elegant. Uh, and again, you know, this is the use of negative space to its absolute best, because it really frames the branches with the birds on it coming down and then clusters of flowers gathering at the bottom. It's just a beautiful, beautiful painting, uh, really pretty. And 1,300 pound uh, 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 opening bid, 15 to 1,500 to 2,000 pound estimate. If you can buy it for 2,000 pounds or less, you've got a very beautiful painting on your hands, very uh, modestly. Um, he, he, this fellow was a, was a Republic period painter, what he was predominantly known for. I don't know if they bother with his dates, but I've seen other work by, by this guy before. And I, I recognize it because of the style. The style was so elegant and so restrained, just beautiful. And uh, then over to uh, this is a nifty little fan painting coming up with just a 600 pound estimate. It's already got a lot of interest. And the reason is, it is absolutely interesting. It's got all the Lohans, all the immortals uh, gathering as they're often depicted, coming at, floating on clouds and so forth, holding precious objects and, and, and there's one with his tiger and so forth, all the groupings signed on the left, but wonderfully done little fan. 
And uh, I bookmarked this the other day to share today because I didn't. I don't think there were, there were many bids on it. And suddenly it's got seven bids. It's at twice its high estimate, and I think it's probably going to go for twelve to fifteen hundred pounds anyway. It's a very nice little painting, really pretty painting. Get into paintings, buy paintings. I, I love them. And then there's this one. It's nineteenth century Qing Dynasty scroll, but it's fairly classical and formal. Um, I just bookmarked this. Is the colors of it were absolutely excellent. Facial expressions were good. Uh, if if I were going to date it, I'd date it probably to the first half of the 19th century, but very, very nicely done. Beautiful colors. It, has a, has, it already has 10 bids. It didn't have all this interest the other day. It's already got 10 bids. It's up to 4,500 pounds, and I think it's got a ways to go. I thought the estimate was very low on it. Uh, it's, to me, it looks like a ten or $15,000 painting, but we'll see. We'll see how it ends up. I'll try to, I'll try to uh, come back and take a look at it after it sells. And then there's this, this very nice carved Celadon peony vase. Now they have it dated as as, night, as as 20th century. And I'm not so sure, I think it might be a little older than that. Uh, if you take a look at the bottom of this, the way that, that, that burnt, sort of burnt texture um, and, and, the, and, the, and the way the Celadon is carved, the beautiful, to the tone of the Celadon and this, this very intense line around the bottom where the glaze ends, all of this looks like it looks more likely to be early 19th century Celadon work. The shape is a, is obviously from the Ming Dynasty. It's a, it's a that narrow bottom up rising into the middle and then going back in is a is a shape you see often on 16th century Ming Celadons. But to me, this looks older than 20th century, even older than Republic. But um, that's the date they're going with. And they may, it may have just been getting. It's already got bids. It's already up to its low estimate, but. It's a nice size. It's uh, was it 13 inches in height, and should should bring um, 1,500 to 2,000 pounds at least. I, I think people are going to disagree with the dating on this lot, but that's just my opinion. All right, but I, I think it's a very very pretty, beautifully done, beautifully carved celadon. Really really luscious, excellent. And uh, what else is going on here? Oh oh, on eBay. Get over there. Scoot over to that page. Get the page to load. There we go. Uh, this closes in a couple of days. This, this rather nifty watercolor that I mentioned last week is up to uh, 160 so dollars. It closes on Sunday. I'm going to check that out. And uh, let me see here. Usually I do the things that are coming up last, but this one somehow leaked in here. Hold on a second. There we go. The uh, uh, Kangxi period, a Mari dish with very nice strong cobalt all the way around sort of punctuates the dish and then this beautiful red and again this is sort of gets back to the thing we were talking about the other day on the Kutani piece that is in gold and uh, typically in gold and uh, red uh, here you have the same case though that they do things in China with just a couple of colors and it can with just a couple of colors you can create amazing effect this has a little this has cobalt underglaze overglazed red and a little bit of gilding, and you get this very, very beautiful, uh, very beautiful effect. Um, and uh, this plate sold for just $152, which was a good buy. That was a nice buy for a piece of Kangxi porcelain. I think they dated it just as, they said Qing 18th century, I don't think it is, I believe that that looks Kangxi to me. He was off, I think, by a little bit on that one. All right, Chin Lung plate, not a bad buy. Kang Shi plate, great buy. <laughs> All right, and then over to this, this very, very pretty and rather unusually done 18th century cup. And it brought a strong price, um, but very nicely decorated, a combination of grisai decoration, over, overglazed grisai, as well as enamels. <clears throat> nicely done with these sort of intimate scenes around a Chinese household and ended up selling for $799. Uh, and this, this, but it was a nice looking cup. It was a, a really an interesting, unusual color. I would love to have seen the entire service that this was taken from, because originally that was a big tea service. All right, and then we have some of these uh, 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 Famille Rose covered vegetable uh, dishes. Uh, did very, very well, $1,237, because of these are those uh, calligraphy models that everybody loves. And uh, off they go to the races every time. They always bring money. 
and then uh, let's see what's happening over here. The Kangxi plate. This, this is so funny listing. The, the seller listed it as, uh, what do you call it? Huge Chinese blue and white charger plate. Charge plate. Charger. I guess a little spelling problem. Anyway, it, it was only 8 inches in diameter. That doesn't look like 8 inches when you look at the Coke bottle. I think he screwed up the... Um, the dimensions. I think this was probably 36 centimeters because there's a Coke can or the size of a standard can, which is about eight inches tall. All right. <laughs> or seven inches tall. And this thing is easily two and a half times the size of that. So I think he had a little, a little problem uh, getting the accurate size in here. At any rate, uh, this was a very, very attractive plate. And in the end, it, it brought a charger price. It brought a thousand sixty seven dollars. But, um, uh, when you're doing your dimensions, make sure you get them right because that's not a 26 centimeter plate. <laughs> All right, now that's a you know 40 centimeter plate from what I can see, 36 and 40 centimeters. So always double check your listings to make sure you have the dimensions properly done because I'm sure you got inundated with emails. And then this this uh, nice Chinese uh, 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 export by a dragon uh, play with a reticulate tray with a reticulated rim on it. Beautiful, beautiful top quality stuff done by Wang Hing uh, around 1890. Ended up doing well. This was a seller, Super Shrink, who's a silver specialist down in the down in the North Carolina area, formerly from New England, and uh, brought $998. Uh, but uh, Wang Hing was one of the most well-known of all the Chinese silversmiths. The work was excellent, and to pick up uh, one of his a plate by him about eight inches or so in diameter. For under a thousand dollars is a pretty good buy, and this one was beautifully done, and the condition looked excellent. If you looked, if you bothered to look at it, you'll notice that all the low, all the low relief ground stuff is is still uh, uh, full, fully crisp, beautifully done, and the dragon has a nice facial expression, and I like the rim very much, with the uh, dragons running around it, really, really chasing pearls. There's a pearl, dragon, 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 pearl, you know, all the way around the outside. Nice, liked it. All right, and then moseying on over to this. I threw this in, not because it was, it, it, it's got some problems. This was a cut down piece of porcelain, but it's it's late Ming. And uh, it was a very nice looking thing. Um, it, it's got a Chen Mar mark on it. It's not Chen Hua, it's late Ming, it's probably one Li. But here it is. And this would have had a longer neck, obviously, and all that. But for the person that, you know, wants a fragment and, and sort of a cool one, it almost looks like a hookah base, but I'm not sure. But uh, this was a, a nice uh, 16th century blue and white piece for the export market. Somebody picked it up for $486. And I think it's an interesting uh, bit, as they, as they say over in the UK, uh, because the shape was interesting, the patterning is interesting. And um, uh, as I said, it, it had obviously a longer considerably longer neck. It's probably missing three or four inches off the top, I would expect. But regardless, it did just fine in the end. It did just fine. And uh, let's see what's going on over here on this page. Get the page. The page is a little slow to load today. I'm not sure why. There we go. Uh, these are things that are closing um, in a couple of days. There's going to be a lot of stuff on the newsletter page on Bid Amount this week. We found we, we bookmarked a whole bunch of stuff uh, that turned up just in the last two days. There wasn't much out there for the last few days, and suddenly, boom, 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 boom. And uh, in here we have this, this nice, uh, about eight or nine inch Ming Longquan Celadon uh, plate, 15th, late 15th century probably. Uh, it's up to $1,225. It's probably got another three or 400 to go. But nice looking uh, piece. And this is from Night Heron Antiques. They, uh, they handle pretty good things. They're out in the New Mexico area last, last time I checked. And then on to this, and then if you're a la Chinese export lacquer tea caddy fan, you want to look at this. This is a nifty tea caddy box, European form, uh, but very nice, very tall, uh, quite quite lovely. Uh, the interior lining, unfortunately, is missing. The, it would have had a pewter lining, as many of you know, is gone, uh, or it's not being shown anyway. So hope you didn't just toss it aside. But this is a nice lacquer caddy and uh, 19th century, and it appears to be in very, very good condition. The only thing I have a question about is the finial original, because it's brown and it should be, uh, usually they're the same color as the body, 
but from above it looks pretty good. So if you get interested in this, email the seller and say, does the does the finial look like it's been reattached, or is it, a, or is it, is it, you know, is it, is it, uh, you know, fully integrated and part of the piece and original? It's difficult to tell from the pictures, but it's only up to eleven dollars. It closes on Tuesday, so there you go. Hope springs eternal. You can go after it. And then this, we, we it's interesting. We did we did the the, the video uh, the other day on Kutani talking about a very nice May Ping piece that I have in my own collection. And then this turned up when we were going through the list of things that we had, we had seen, is this charger. This is not a plate. This pattern is most often seen in plates that are under 10 or 11 inches, not huge, huge pieces. Uh, this is a, a, a very nice piece of uh, 19th century Meiji era Kutani. Uh, it's got the, the Kutani mark on the back, it's beautifully decorated all the way around. Uh, uh, but uh, in, in, in uh, very skillfully painted here, this scene of the two ships coming together and uh, are passing one another. It looks like they're colliding, but I think they're just passing one another uh, out there in the ocean. And uh, the mountains are done in the background with wonderful landscape. The sky has, uh, the sails rather, they've used different uh, textile patterns in strips across the sails. And then the, it's all framed within this very nice deep, you know, sort of a bull red uh, outer border with um, a very elegant uh, use of greens against it. Really very successful. And this plate is 16 inches in diameter. This is a big piece of porcelain. 16 inch charger. Uh, I'm going to confirm that, but I'm quite certain that was the size. 16 and a half inches. Weighs seven pounds. It's a big piece of porcelain. But it's only up to $30. Uh, this is a, it's being sold by a seller in Davenport, Iowa in the US. Shipping from there to here, for example, to the Boston area is about 60 bucks, $65. Uh, but this is a really nice piece of, of, of old Catani, uh, antique Meiji period Catani where wonderful scene and it would look great hanging on a wall. And uh, if you can pick this up for under $300, I think it's a, a, it would be a fun thing to own. If you like Japanese porcelain, this is a good thing. All right, and uh, much better than a lot of the other Kutani ware that you see out there. And also this, this uh, Yongchen period uh, teapot will be in the newsletter this week. And uh, what else is going on here? Let's get this page to load. Oh, this. This is unusual. This is, this is from Migulari. This is a two-inch tall teapot. Miniature compressed form underglazed blue teapot. Very good cobalt on this deep sapphire blue cobalt interestingly decorated but it's 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 literally two inches tall so it's like this and uh it's like two and a half inches long or something it's very very small but uh, quite meticulously painted uh very nicely done and i don't see any chips around the spout uh it may have been made as a water dropper i suspect because of its unusual small size uh but uh, maybe they just made it as a miniature it does have a small hairline on the interior the rim but the rest of it looks good. Uh, at any rate, it's it's uh, up to uh, it's got. How do you get seven bids and it's up to five dollars? Um, any rate, uh, it's a, 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 a rare little teapot. Ought to bring four or five hundred. Uh, but I, I really like it. It's absolutely charming. And if you if you collect early blue and white and old blue and white, when was the last time? One, where did you see this form before? Have you seen it? That bell form. Um, uh, on a small pot. And where have you seen a teapot this small? Very unusual on a couple of points. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's worth going after if you're a blue and white porcelain or a Kangxi collector. I think that's, that's worth, worth thinking about. These clothes on Sunday, these are 19th century uh, Famille Rose uh, a pair of vases done in the Qinlung style. They have Qinlung marks on them. They're not Qinlung, all right, from what I can see. They look to be uh, first part, first half of the 19th century from what I'm seeing. Uh, but I, I like them. I think they're very, very nice. And um, here they are. They've got a couple of repairs around the rims up here uh, and so forth. They're not perfect, but nice, nice pair, beautifully done um, and, and have legitimate age. They close later today. They close tonight at 1044 uh, p.m., I guess, California time. Anyway, they're up to $1,511. I suspect they're going to get up into the $3,500 range. But we'll see. We'll see. You never know. Leave a bid. Always leave a bid. 
<laughs> just to be safe. And then this, this Japanese Arita charger. I threw this in this week because we're sort of doing Japanese a little bit here. Um, is this a really nice 17.7 inch uh, blue and white uh, Izan Arita blue and white charger. Nice looking one. Absolutely elegant. Very somewhat dramatic the way it's opened up on both sides here and here. But uh, very nicely done. Uh, and it's got this is a buy it now item with just $225 plus 50 bucks shipping from uh, uh, from Iowa to here. This is the same uh, seller that has the Kutani piece. It's a it's a Baoming uh, collection. Uh, is a seller on eBay. Uh, he seems to be quite knowledgeable on on Chinese Japanese material. I, I, he does good descriptions, and uh, and seems to get uh, uh, good when he has good things. And he puts them up. They do well. Uh, but I think he, I think he knows what he's doing, as they say. And then lastly is this is this uh, Tibetan rug. This is a good one. Um, uh, and it's a 19th century one to early 20th century. It's got that pink in there. When you see pink in a, in a rug like that, this pink, generally think late, you know, very late Qing uh, period, but uh, uh, nicely done. And they have it listed as Chinese. It's it, it most often a Peking rug. This isn't really a Peking rug. It's mu much more likely to be a Tibetan one. Now, um, Tibetan rugs like this typically sell for... 700 to a thousand dollars just as a sort of a general guide uh gruen and gruen is selling this they know a lot about rugs so we'll see what happens all right um i think it'll probably get there it's got a couple days to go and it's got two bids already uh but if you're looking for a nice rug to to throw down that's uh, uh chinese or asian you know uh, this this is a good choice this is a good looking rug all righty. And there's other stuff that's going to be in there. Like I said, we found a great number of things to put in the newsletter page this week. So check it out over on Bitamount. And uh, that brings us all up to date for the week. And as I said, I will be out of touch uh, next week and hopefully back uh, on Monday. Uh, so there won't be a, any, I, I don't think there'll be any videos next week. Uh, uh, if I'm up to it, I'll try to do one. But uh, otherwise, I'll just... I'll have to skip a week, unfortunately. Hate to do that, but I don't have any choice. And uh, if you enjoy the video, subscribe, leave a message, leave a comment. I love the comments. You guys, on the on the video from the Katani piece, everybody left so many left a lot of comments, some interesting ones, and one of them was a lot of you want to see more on Japanese stuff. So we're going to work on that because I, 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 as I said many times, I feel the Japanese art market is just for some reason just overlooked all the time, and it shouldn't be. It's, they, there's some great great things uh, from the Chinese art world that just seem to have uh, been put on everybody's back burner for the last 10 or 15 years uh, as, the, as the Chinese rage uh, craze raged on. But uh, uh, there's the stuff still there. There's still some wonderful Japanese and Korean things to, 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 to think about owning and collecting and becoming interested in. So there it all is. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be in touch when I'm back and uh, appreciate all of you very much really do. All right. Have a nice weekend. It's gorgeous here today, by the way. It's almost 55 degrees or 50 degrees, a little windy, but uh, very, very pleasant. Okay. See you all soon. Bye-bye.